Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. We continue our discussion with Gary Feynman to explore his research on the pre-Hispanic production of the famous and unusual pigment Maya Blue in Mesoamerica. Recently, I collaborated with a number of colleagues, uh, including Dean Arnold of Wheaton College, in a study of Maya Blue. And an intern, who was also part of our team, identified objects in our collections where we had uh, Maya Blue pigment on certain pieces. Maya Blue is a pigment that the Maya used uh, to decorate murals and other objects. And it's something that has intrigued chemists and archeologists for years because blue is not a very common color in nature. So to produce a blue is always somewhat rare. Maya blue is a very stable pigment. It, in other words, it does not rub off or wash off very easily. And that's rare because researchers discovered that the two key components of Maya blue were indigo, which is a plant, and a particular fine white clay uh, called polyagorskite. And so to have a very stable chemical bond between an organic and an inorganic material is a rarity. But nobody had ever found a site where Maya blue was being made, and nobody had a full understanding of how uh, this tight bond between indigo and fine clay was forged. And that's what Dean Arnold and our team wanted to discover. And one of the pieces that this intern found in our collections was this incense bowl, but the unique thing about this incense bowl is that the incense from within the bowl was also preserved. And the reason it was preserved was because it was thrown into the sinkhole or cenote at Chichen Itza. And so underwater, an organic material, copal incense or resin, which normally in the ground would disintegrate and deteriorate, was preserved in the water. So we had not just the bowl, but we had this block of incense. And in this block of incense, we found not just blue pigment, but we also found little pieces of fine white clay. And we used elemental analysis to determine that this fine white clay embedded in the block of incense was actually from a clay source in northern Yucatan, where contemporary potters still extract clay today. So we could tell that this is how they were um, making Maya blue. That's neat because it's probably the first example where we have direct evidence that they were making Maya blue near this particular cenote. But that in itself left other questions, like why were they making Maya blue near this cenote? And also, how were they doing it? Well, they, how? They were probably doing it by burning copal incense and using that to fuse the inorganic uh, clay with the organic indigo. And the heat and the copal, which is a binding sticky substance, probably helped forge the bonds uh, that are at the basis of this blue pigment. Blue is a very important color to the Maya associated with supernaturals uh, that bring rain. And before uh, Maya sacrificed things or people to uh, the rain deities, they would often paint them blue. And the cenote is full of bones and objects that were sacrificed to the rain deities. And so these objects and people were probably painted blue before they were dumped into the cenote. And that's why they were making blue at the side, Maya blue at the side of the cenote. In the 1890s, when this dredging of the cenote was carried out, the people who did the study stated 
that as they were dredging, they noted several meters at the base of the cenote where they found blue precipitate floating in the water. But they never offered an explanation for this rather rare occurrence. That blue precipitate was the Maya blue that washed off of people and objects. 